the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers, brought to you by Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Out of the West and into your home, riding the range of mystery and adventure, blazing the trail of Western story and song, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, that teller of tall tales, Gaffy Hayes, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. If you buckaroos like excitement, you've come to the right place to get it, because something mighty exciting happened down our way, and we're going to tell you about it right now. My good old pal Gabby Hayes will start to tell him, won't you, Pappy? Sure will, son. Buckaroos, get you some bear grease and plaster down your hair right now. Because if you don't, it'll be standing on end before we finish this story. We call it Ghost Town, then. I guess you know about that there ghost town near Paradise Valley. It was a mining community once, but when the mines played out, everybody moved away. And now nothing is there, except a few weather-beaten buildings standing around. Well, a couple days ago, my pal Roy and me rode into Mineral City and wanted to buy some supplies for Roy's Double R Bar Ranch. Whoa, whoa, easy, Trigger. Happy will tie up here. You start buying the supplies while I'm up the sheriff. You better let me see to the sheriff, son. I know how to handle matters of law. All I want done is a report made that somebody stole a yearling from our herd and left the money out on the porch to pay for it. Yes, that's saint. Now, wait a minute. And when it comes to buying supplies, well, you're such a sharp bargainer, nobody dare cheat you. <coughs> yeah, yeah, of course. You're right, son. I, I, I better buy the supplies. You see, I'm real cagey, and you get trimmed down like a 25-cent haircut. Howdy, Roy, Daddy. Hi, Dale. Hey, why didn't you say you were coming to town this morning, Dale? Well, I might as well have stayed home for all the good it's done me. I'll go start dickering, son. Right, Pappy. Uh, what do you mean, Dale? Well, I came in with one of my riders, Steve Hamilton, to get some groceries for the Circle E, but the general store doesn't seem to have any. No groceries? How come? Somebody broke into the store last night, took half the merchandise, and left money to pay for it on the counter. Left money? Yes, sir. Dale, that's the third time something like this has happened in Paradise Valley. Miss Dale! Miss Dale! Drop your eyes and turn your back. Well, Gabby! What's the matter? Steve Hamilton's coming down the street dressed in a molasses barrel and waving a $20 bill in his teeth. He's what? Well, now calm down. He got almost to the blacksmith and somebody yanked him from his horse, pulled off his shirt and Levi's and his boots and hat, and then gave him a $20 bill and rode off. Mr. Hawkins, he supplied the molasses barrel. Now, why would anyone do such a thing to Steve? Dale... Some dude may think he's having a lot of fun taking our cattle and groceries and ripping the clothes off the men. Farmer. But it's no fun for us, and we'd better put a stop to the whole thing right now. Steve's walking. He's holding the sticky molasses barrel up with one hand and leading his horse with a tother. Gabby, bring him around to the back entrance of the dry goods store. Dale and I will meet him there with some new clothes. Sure thing, Roy. We'll find out what these hombres look like and ride out after them. This business has gone past funny stage. <laughs> Odd part is, I didn't see the men, Roy. Well, you must have, Steve. But if they jumped... I was you headed to the blacksmith shop, walking my horse, because he'd thrown a shoe, when an old man stopped me to ask if I knew where I could buy a good second-hand watch. Uh, a real old fellow? Yeah. And while I was trying to answer him, somebody slipped up from behind, pulled me off my horse, slapped the blindfold on me, and took my clothes. You didn't see him at all? There were two of them. And I think I'd recognize their voices, but well, I don't know anything more. Two besides the old man? Yeah. Uh... What was the old fellow like, Steve? Oh, I guess he could be called a, a desert rat getter. Uh-huh. Steve, you go ahead and get your horse shot. We'll circle around a little and see if we can't pick up that trail of those hombres. All right, Roy. If you need help, call me. Come on, Gabby. Dale, we'll stop over at the sheriff's office first thing and report this to him. Uh, just a second, son. What's the trouble? Well, you, uh, aiming to track down the old fire, too? 
The old fella could be working in cahoots with the others, Roy. Yeah, I suppose. Hey, what made you ask about him, Gabby? Well, uh, Dale, I, I got to tell you and Roy something confidential. You can trust me, Gabby. Well, you know how every family has got one member who don't turn out just right? Sort of a wild hair? Sure. One of my family. Cousin, Clackety. Clackety Hayes. Now, wait a minute, Gabby. What are you talking about? I'm making a confession, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> Clackety's been living out there in that ghost town near Boken Air for seven, eight years. He's a desert rat. Son, I hope you ain't going to throw me off the place because I'm kinfolk to Clackety. You, you and me, Zorro. When I right? throw you off of the place, Pappy, I'll throw myself off, too. Boy, instead of reporting this to the sheriff... Why don't we ride out to the ghost town first and have a talk with Clackety? I'm for that, Dale. Sure, appreciate it. Myself, I, I think it's a couple of dudes acting cute. So they can brag about putting something over on us folks out here in the West. I hope so. I'd, uh, I'd like to kind of rough them up a little. Show them that it isn't. <laughs> Dale, ever notice where the ghost town has been built? You mean the way it's walled in by mountains? Set right down in a sort of a nest. And the only way of getting to it is that narrow trail. Hey, somebody's coming through the pass from the ghost town. Sure enough. Keep out of sight. Is that Clackety? No. Nope. He's coming from the ghost town. Dale, I wonder if you'd do guard duty while Gabby and I are in there. Why, sure, Roy, if you think... We don't know quite what we're going to run into. If you signal, I'll ride for town, Roy. That's it. I know you're anxious to get back to your ranch. So if we don't signal within a few minutes, you go ahead. Maybe you can catch up with Steve before he leaves. Sure. Come on, Gabby. Let's find out what kind of people have moved into Ghost Town. Well, now to see what's here besides empty buildings. Awful still, ain't it? Yeah, no sign of life at all. Where does Clackety live? Jack, just ahead. You wait here for us, Trigger. What first, huh? Hey, the door of the old meeting house here. Looks as if it's been disturbed lately. See how the dirt's been pushed away from the sill? Yep, sure has. Let's take a look, just to make sure. Hold it. Well, it's all right, come on. Nobody's here. Scary, ain't it? An empty building. Look, there's the groceries that were stolen. Yeah. It took more than one or two men to carry all these away, Gabby. Must be quite a population in our ghost town. What are these things? Clothes of some sort. Prison uniforms. That's what they are. See here, numbers stenciled across the top? These are uniforms convicts wear in the state penitentiary. No, it appears claggedy has got himself in bad company, don't it, son? Well, uh, hey, there was a break at the penitentiary across the state line about a month ago. Eight convicts got out. Never did hear whether they caught him or not. Maybe we'd better... They might be holed up here, Gabby. That'd explain why they're stealing stuff, especially food and clothing. They'd need eat, and they'd have to get rid of their prison uniforms. Son, through the back window. What? Horses. That means we're not alone. If they had left, they'd have ridden their horses out. Happy, come on. We're hightailing for the sheriff's office. All right, reach for this guy. Both of you. We'll teach you to come snooping around our layout. Let's rush him, Gabby. They got guns. We can't let him get free. We got the old guy. Help like him to the young one. Take these thick handles. Use them and you'll need help before it's through. That'll take care of him for now. Ed, Blackie, get some rope. Tie him up and throw him in that empty shack. We'll decide what to do with him after we find out who's responsible for letting him get through the pass. <laughs> When we pitched into them hombres, Roy and me had no idea how many of them there was. They'd come at us from every crack. And I gotta confess, if it was me, I'd have jumped on my horse and rid out of there. But not my partner, Roy. They were bad men, and he wasn't gonna let them get away if he could help it. They whipped us that fuss round. But if you think that's the end of this story, <laughs> you got another thing coming. You listen and we'll see you right after we have a little meeting on a subject that's next to Roy's heart. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant 
Say, what's your biggest ambition? Everybody's got a yen to be a big shot in some line or other. Then get started on good breakfast of Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. Yes, doctors say the more often youngsters eat a good oatmeal breakfast, the better they grow. That's because a recent survey shows only one school child in five gets the kind of a breakfast he should have. There's more growth, more endurance for you ambitious youngsters in nourishing oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. Order delicious Quaker oats from your grocer tomorrow. Still less than a penny a serving. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is Quaker oats. Things started disappearing from Paradise Valley. Roy and me got on the trail of the varmints who were taking them. We figured my cousin Clackety Hayes might have something to do with it. So we headed for the ghost town where Clackety lives. But there, instead of Clackety, we found a whole herd of escaped convicts. They jumped Roy and me and whipped us to a frazzle. Fact is, I don't remember nothing more till I heard Roy calling my name and... Daddy, are you all right? I... It's not too loud. They got a guard outside. And don't try to move. We're tied hand and foot. Laying here on the floor. Son, what in blame? Daddy, I want you to listen. Just listen. We guessed right. Those numbers are the escaped convicts. And we got to work fast if we intend to beat them. I didn't hear everything, but I heard enough to know that they intend to hide here until the hunt farm dies down. Or so bad. They've been stealing stuff because they're afraid to come out in the open. And I guess they figured as long as they left money for what they took, we wouldn't trail them. I ain't worrying so much about getting them as I am about us staying alive. Yeah. Well, I believe we can prevent them from doing anything to us, at least for a while. By pretending the law is on our trail, too. Pretending we're bad men? You and me? Yeah. Uh, suppose Clackety should come home and see us. Clackety's my cousin. He's bound to show he knows me. Quiet, somebody outside. Don't take any chances, boys. If they come in, let me do the talking. Go on ahead, Clackety. I'll need help in getting rid of them. Even if they are tied. I reckon we owe you fellas an apology, mister. Eh, what's that? We wouldn't have jumped you except we had you figured for sheriff's men out the trappers. We've always used this ghost town as a hideout. And we thought this time the sheriff's men might be waiting for us. You said hideout. What are you hiding from? I doubt if I'll answer that, mister. Come to think of it, we don't know for sure you're not sheriff's men. And I don't aim to be tricked into anything. I kind of like the way he talks, boys. Smart. Maybe there are kinds. Don't be too sure, Spike. If they are like us, there might be a lot of help, especially in getting around this territory. I don't know if we want to be of help to you. Yeah, they probably do know the territory. They probably belong to one of them ranches around here, and if we let them go, they'll head for the sheriff or something. Let who go? You're not letting anybody go. We're staying here. We need this ghost town as much as you do, and we're staying. Do you understand that? Now, what do you think now, boys? I'm kind of inclined to go easy on them. Oh, uh, Spike. What? Oh, Ed's back. Come on in, Ed. Yeah, I uh, brought Clackety in from town. Say, uh, who's this? Clackety, son. We're in for it now. All right, now we'll find out whether or not these two belong around here. Clackety, you know everybody in this country. I want you to take a look at those men on the floor. Is that there, fellas? Ever seen them before, Clackety? Maybe on one of the ranches near here? I, uh, I, uh... No, sir, I don't believe it is. Well, that satisfies me. Cut the ropes. You're not letting them go, are you, Spike? Of course I'm not letting them go. But they look like they're our kind, so let's make them comfortable. We'll still keep a guard on the door, but we'll postpone what we were going to do to them until we get proof of who they are and why they came here. Looking me straight in the eye and saying he never seen me before. Uh, this sitting here is getting on my nerves, Pappy. Mine, too. I keep worrying about Dale. She was supposed to head back to her ranch if we didn't signal. But I'm afraid she may check up and find we aren't home. Daddy, if she takes a notion to ride here, none of us will have a chance. Nope. Including her. Oh, bad one. Daddy. Claggedy, is that you? Yeah. 
Be here and you tell us what's coming into my town. A bad critter's cousin, Daddy. I, uh... I figured you wouldn't want me to say I know you when I was with such people, Gabby. Me already being a black sheep and shiftless and lazy and all. Clarkity, we're going to appreciate what you did all our lives. Hey, you were all right, you hate I recognized you when I was here before, and I... Well, I knowed how nice you seemed, and I thought I'd get hungry for singing out here alone. I brung along with guitar. See? Well, I'm afraid singing might be against the rules here, Clackety. Oh, they don't care. Yeah, they, he's a guardian. He seen me come in. Oh, they always let me sing, as long as they don't get too loud. Well, say, you might have an idea there, Clackety. If I was to do a little yodel and Dale was anywhere near, she'd think we were safe, son, and wouldn't try to come in. That's what I was thinking. Clackety, we will have music. Awful, oh, I say, yes. Sure enjoy it. Just an echo in the valley, but it brings back sweet memories of you. Can't you hear it through the twilight? Somebody on the outside. Give me the guitar and be quick about it. No, no, the guitar is mine, boys. Don't bust it. This ain't his fault. I asked it to sing. Sure it is. Why would I want to give anybody a signal? We're hiding now. Well, this ain't his fault. I asked him to sing. You sure? Well, Ed was outside the garden. He told me it was all right. Oh, well, that's different. Forget it. But no more singing, understand? Come on, boys. I reckon he wasn't trying to pull anything. Listen, an answer. Somebody's answering his signal. Dale, son. We better get out of here. Cosby will be heading this way. How about these two? I reckon we'll take care of ourselves right now. Get away from them, Spike. There isn't time to fight, run. We want out of here. We'll be back for you. He's turning. He's getting away. Hey, Blackie, let go. They signaled to somebody. We can't let him go, Gabby. We've got to keep him here until we reach the sheriff. How are we going to do that, Roy? I'll we... keep him. Trigger. Trigger, boy. Stampede those horses and run them out of here. Right through the pass all the way, boy. That's it, Trigger. That's it, boy. Turn. Maybe we can sneak out now. We're not leaving until we can take these convicts with us. Get them, boys. That devil ought to be a big enough to bring in, but we can take care of him. Yeah. Roy, they're coming back. Here, yeah, let's work on them while we can. They fixed us so we can't get away. Excuse me, please. Reckon if nobody wants to get shot, they'll put their hands in the air. Hey, what's going on here? I got a gun on you. That there fellow's a kid of mine, and I'm going to see that you don't hurt him. Go to his friend, another. His friend is Roy Rogers. Why, Roy Rogers? Oh, hey, uh, I borrowed this here gun here from one of them while they were sleeping, Gabby. What if I come in handy? Nice work, Clackety. Want to hand the gun to me? Be a pleasure. You and Gabby can lift theirs out of their belt. Hmm. The fellow we saw leaving when he was riding in. What? There he is. He's coming through the pass, and he's got a gun. Oh, boy, that was close. He shot that pistol right out of your hand, hey, son. His gun's gone. There. there he got his gun with that shot. Well, let's finish him this time. We fooled around so long. Yeah, I'm off for that. Hey, a posse. A posse is coming down the trail. Hey, look. They were bringing a posse. Get a spike. Let's get these two first. Let's put them out of the way. Hey. Get his gun, Gabby, while I try to take care of the other. Here it is, son. I got the gun. All right, up with your hands. Up with your hands. Oh. I sure am, Dale. But you and the sheriff are about the most welcome sight a man ever saw. I'll right, take over, Roy. Keep those hands up, boys. Hey, Bird, get the gun. All right, this is a mighty good haul, Roy. There's been a five-state search for these fellas. Been going on over a month. I sure thought we were going her. You can thank Dale that we're not, Gabby. Well, it was just luck we came, Roy. When I found out you hadn't gotten home this afternoon, I went down to tell the sheriff about everything. He was the one who thought we ought to head out this way. Well, I did a little yodel, though, so you'd think that everything was okay. Sure, but right afterwards, we heard Trigger whinnying and running around. Then we saw the other horses come galloping through the path without riders. That spell troubled us, so we decided to rush in here and see. And lucky for us, you did, too. Mighty lucky. Well, ladies, this may be your last chance to get this handsome and very useful double boiler. 
Modern, streamlined, of finest quality, heavy-gauge aluminum. It's highly polished, really beautiful, so practical you'll use it day after day for years. Friends, we're proud to offer you this fine, modern double boiler. It's made by one of America's old, reliable manufacturers of aluminum ware. Its quality is guaranteed by the Quaker Oats Company. The bottom section of heavy 18-gauge aluminum has a big two-quart capacity. The inset is a full quart and a half size. The cover fits both sections, so you can use each section as a separate saucepan. And listen, normal value of this new heavy-gauge aluminum double boiler is $2 and a half. Normal value, $2 and a half. But if you send immediately, you can get yours for only $1 and a quarter. And one Quaker or Mother's Oats trademark. That means a saving of one half. You save one dollar and a quarter. Then at once, here's all you have to do. Mail your name and address, one dollar and a quarter, only one dollar and a quarter, and one Quaker or Mother's Oats trademark to Double Boiler, Box 6166, Chicago 77. Hurry, supplies are very limited. This may be your last chance. Just put your name and address in a letter, together with only one dollar and a quarter, and one trademark from a package of either Quaker or Mother's Oats. Address, Double Boiler, Box 6166, Chicago, 77. Dale, we came over because Gabby remembered in the excitement that we forgot to introduce the... Just a second there, son. I ought to have the privilege of introducing them. After all, Clackety is my team. <laughs> Chuck. Why, Gabby, I thought you considered Clackety a sort of a... No such thing. I say now what I always said. I'm proud my blood is flowing in Clackety's veins. He sure showed me he was related to me when he had them there convicts at the pint of a gun with their hands reaching for the sky. Clackety, we think you sort of deserve some kind of a reward for helping. Oh, shucks, no. I, I was already kind of sore to my fellas because they was a taking my money to pay for the stuff they stole. So that's where the money came from. Uh-huh. Well, that wasn't so bad, though, but... When they stopped your singing, I got done good man. You're in tootin' you did. Yes, sir. I, I just knocked the whoops off the gun. Then I'd have shot, too. Who are you, Wood? If you hadn't tucked it away from me, I'd sure like you. Yeah. Just the same, Clackety. We're grateful. Say, I wonder if you'd like to stay here and work with my ranch hands on the Circle E. I'd invite you to stay at the Double R Bar, Clackety, but... I don't know if I could stand two members of the Hayes family around or not. Now, what you mean by that? <laughs> oh, uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll just go on back to the ghost town. Clackety. I sort of like the quiet there. Shiftless, I guess, but uh, I enjoy sitting there wondering who picks things up first so the sun shines every morning. Who sees to it that animals love their young ones and take care of them and... And who figures it all out so things are like they are? I kind of like to think about that and about belonging to it all. I uh, oh, hope your feelings won't be hurt none if I uh, go on back. Clackety, you could still do Dale, that. if he wants to go back, we shouldn't try to stop him. Any man ought to be let live the kind of a life that he likes best. Just so long as he doesn't hurt anybody else by living it that way. Well, Gabby... Reckon we'd better be riding along, eh? Sure a wise feller, my partner, Roy. Great feller, too. Want for him, and convicts might still be running around the country hurting folks. But they sure ain't. Got them locked up tighter than a vinegar barrel. We, uh... We've got my cousin here with us, and we promised to sing him a little song. Likes music, you know. Roy, Dale, Roy Willing, the writers of the Purple Sage, everybody's going to join in, except you and me and my cousin Clackety, of course. We just listen.
to you. They just listen and comfort you. Hazy Mountain. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Don't forget, smiles are made out of the sun and shine, and the frown from a rainy day. Quaker Oaks, the giant of the cereals, presents the Roy Rogers Show each week at this same hour. With the writers of the Purple Page, Dale Evans, Gabby Hayes, and the king of the cowboys himself, Republic Pictures' great star in person, Roy Rogers. What's extra special good for Sunday supper? Ask Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Waffle. Golden, light, and tempted and Aunt Jemima waffles makes the happiest Sunday supper ever. And quick, too, ladies. Just follow the easy directions on my Aunt Jemima pancake and waffle ready mix. For a Sunday treat, serve Aunt Jemima waffles for supper tonight. Republic's latest Roy Rogers picture is Nighttime in Nevada. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. <laughs>